these are patients who have atrial fibrillation who we know benefit, and, and some risk of stroke, so patients we know benefit from oral anticoagulation, and who have either an acute coronary syndrome or are undergoing a PCI and therefore need antiplatelet therapy. And so everybody in the trial was on a P2Y12 inhibitor, almost all clopidogrel, um, but a little bit of ticagrelor and prasugrel, but almost all clopidogrel, but that's the base. And then we randomized people to a Pixaban versus war, uh, vitamin K antagonist, almost all warfarin. And we randomized people in a two by two factorial design to aspirin or aspirin placebo. The aspirin part of the study is the more interesting and probably more unique and more important uh, finding. So um, we found that aspirin increased bleeding by 89%. Um, over aspirin placebo. So if you flip that around, that's a 47% reduction in bleeding with placebo compared to aspirin. Um, there was uh, no difference in death or hospitalization, and there, were, there was no statistically significant difference on any ischemic event, either the composite or any individual. But there were slight trends, and we have to be careful talking about trends, there were trends toward more MIs, more stent thrombosis, more um, urgent revascularization without aspirin. So what I would take away from this, now the other thing to remember is that all these patients got aspirin up front, right, during their PCI or initially for their ACS. So aspirin still clearly has a role there. Um, the question is, do you send the patient home on aspirin? And I think what, we, what, what you do get from Augustus is good information about the risks and benefits of doing that. So if you send the patient home on aspirin, they're gonna bleed a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, you might be preventing um, a few MIs, a few stent thrombosis, a few re urgent revascularization events. Um, and uh, my colleague, Dr. Lopez, uh, has quantified this. So you, know, to, to, uh, you have to accept 15 bleeding events to prevent one maybe, because it's not statistically significant, one possible stent thrombosis event. Yes. And so, question, is that worth it? Uh, is it, it needs to be tailored still, and this is part of the art of medicine. Um, I think, you know, that, that's a conversation, a decision that individual doctors and patients are gonna have to make, um, and it's something that we need to explore more in the data. Can we identify certain patients who are higher risk for stent thrombosis? Um, or higher risk for recurrent ischemic events who really need the aspirin and other patients who don't. Um, and then the other thing we need to explore is when, right? Because we're talking about a six month period, um, but there may be, maybe it's the first week or the first two weeks. Um, and my guess is the challenge will be that the stent thromboses will occur early and the bleeding will occur early. And so that will, won't be an answer, but we need to dig into that more. So we found a 31% reduction in bleeding um, uh, with a Pixaban uh, compared to warfarin. That's uh, ISTH major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding, bleeds that matter, um, and uh, found that reduction. So we had a, a, two secondary endpoints. Uh, our first secondary endpoint with, was death or hospitalization. Uh, and we found a reduction in death or hospitalization with a Pixaban versus warfarin, all driven by a reduction in hospitalization, not death. Uh, and then we had a second secondary endpoint, which was a broad composite of ischemic events, and we saw no difference in ischemic events um, uh, with the Pixaban versus warfarin. There was a numerical and statistically significant, nominally statistically significant reduction in stroke with a Pixaban compared to warfarin, uh, as we sort of would have expected from the results of Aristotle. So there have been um, two prior clinical trials, one with rivaroxaban, Pioneer AF, and one with dabigatran, Redual, uh, that have looked at these same patient populations, pretty much. Um, those two trials really only included people who had undergone PCI, and not acute coronary syndrome patients who were medically managed, but similar, similar situation. Uh, in the rivaroxaban trial, Pioneer AF, they studied uh, two different regimens compared to what, they, what we call triple therapy. So their control group was warfarin uh, plus aspirin plus a P2Y12 inhibitor. And then they studied uh, one regimen that uh, reduced the dose of uh, rivaroxaban a little bit and dropped aspirin. And they studied another regimen that reduced the dose of rivaroxaban a lot and didn't drop aspirin. And both those rivaroxaban regimens caused less bleeding.
Um, and uh, there was no difference in ischemic events. Now, Pioneer only had about 1,500 patients in it, um, and so there were wide confidence intervals around those ischemic events. So the Dabigatran trial, uh, Redul, uh, took two approved doses of Dabigatran, 110 milligrams and 150 milligrams, without aspirin, and compared it to triple therapy. And they found that both those regimens, uh, without aspirin, reduced bleeding, um, uh, uh, and saw no statistically significant difference in ischemic events, but there was a hint toward more ischemic events in the low-dose dabigatran arm without aspirin. So both those trials um, did what I would call confusing the dropping of aspirin with the changing of anticoagulant, right? So we, we designed a trial to rigorously test this. We did a two-by-two two factorial so we can separate out the two questions. I use apixaban a lot already, and I would feel very comfortable using apixaban. Um, I think that the data with apixaban is a little stronger than the data from Redul or Pioneer with those other drugs, but those other drugs would be okay um, as well. I would not use warfarin.